Kavanaugh, a Democratic member of the House Armed Services, Agriculture and Oversight Committees, and a good friend to us. So welcome back to the broadcast. Let's talk about the oil companies who you know are pushing back after President Biden sent that letter to the CEOs demanding that they boost gas supplies to try to combat the rising prices. ExxonMobil and Chevron said the administration could be doing more to address oil prices. This, as the president invokes uh, weighing some uh, emergency powers, uh, can either party do anything about this? Well, the oil companies are just factually false. President Biden is right that they have many leases. The problem is that they're making record profits and they're sending that to Wall Street. They're not investing in increasing supply. They're sending those profits to Wall Street. They're profiting in enormous ways at the expense of the American consumer. And that's why many of us are calling for a windfall profits tax so that they uh, are taxed on those extraordinary profits and we can put money back in the pockets of consumers. Are they trying to justify that position that, that you explained there because they can say, oh, gosh, during the COVID pandemic, you know, we lost money? Well, the reason that they lost money uh, has nothing to do with what they're doing now, which is making obscene amount of profits on uh, Putin's war. And if they come clean and they say, yeah, we're making a record amount of profits, that would be one thing. But look, I admire the president. Uh, he's following President Kennedy in 1962. President Kennedy uh, took on the steel industry and those prices came down. And I'm glad that the president is now out there saying it's wrong for oil executives to be profiting on Putin's war while other Americans are paying at the pump. Can I ask how much a gallon of gas is where you are in California and what your constituents are saying about that? I mean, who are they blaming? Are they blaming big oil or are they blaming the administration? Well, it's over six bucks. Uh, you know, the, the price is high in the Bay Area. Uh, and every time I fly back to Washington and then go back home, it goes up a little higher. Hopefully, uh, as your reporting suggested, maybe we've reached the peak. Uh, but they're upset. They're upset at the oil companies. Frankly, they're upset at everyone in government. I mean, uh, look, I mean, drivers are facing a hard time and uh, they're uh, hurting. So they're upset at a lot of people. Yeah. So on the campaign trail, you will remember that President Biden said he was going to make Saudi Arabia pay the price, going to make them a pariah after U.S. intelligence determined Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman approved the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Now the president is heading to Saudi Arabia next month. And the president was asked about that trip. Let's take a listen. Have you made a decision about how you will handle the Khashoggi killing when you go to Saudi Arabia? I'm not going to meet with I'm not going to meet them yet. I'm going to an international meeting. This is going to be part of it. So what are your thoughts on this trip? Is the U.S. looking to ask Saudi Arabia to pump more oil? And do you think the president should even be seen shaking hands with MBS? I mean, is that a very uncomfortable optic? Do you think it'll happen? Well, Alex, as you know, I have been leading the effort for the last five years to bring the Yemen war to an end. Mm -hmm. The Saudis have been responsible for that war. Let's just be clear. It's not just that MBS hacked and killed an American journalist. MBS has been responsible for the bombing of thousands of civilians in Yemen, the greatest humanitarian crisis in the world, uh, even greater than Ukraine. And the president promised to end that war. I believe the president is committed to that. He's got people around him, I think, who have been too uh, apologetic for Saudi Arabia. But what he ought to do is he, may, he should make it clear that MBS needs to lift the blockade. He needs to understand that the Saudis have lost that war. He needs to end that war before the president meets with him. But he shouldn't meet with the with MBS in any way, uh, even in a bilat in a conference, without that commitment. You know, you mentioned Ukraine, and the president certainly uh, announced that he uh, is going to send another $1 billion worth of weapons for Ukraine. Uh, that's what he said this week. He also announced an additional $225 million in humanitarian assistance. How long? Can the U.S. sustain this kind, this amount of support to Ukraine? And does this military support, does it potentially undermine any potential push for a diplomatic end? Or does it strengthen Ukraine's position? Because they have this military might when it comes to negotiations. Well, so I think the president and Secretary Blinken have done a brilliant job in how they've handled Ukraine. They've rallied the entire Western world. They've rallied NATO. 
Uh, it is our aid that has allowed Ukraine to resist Putin. If we didn't give that aid, Putin would have marched right into Kiev, and then who knows where he would have gone next. So we had no choice. Uh, but let's be clear, if it weren't for the president's leadership, then Ukraine may have fallen. I mean, this has been uh, the president and Secretary Blinken doing this, and we have to support Ukraine while simultaneously pushing aggressively for a diplomatic solution. But for there to be a diplomatic solution, Putin has to be willing to agree. He has to be willing to agree to the ex-ante borders. And so far, there's no sign that he's willing to make that agreement. Point well taken. All points well taken. California Congressman Ro Khanna, good to see you. Thank you. Coming up next is a holiday observance and a sobering reminder of a tragedy.